The generated look-alike slash sound-alike visuals and voices are intended for visual enhancement purposes only. All artists are faithfully represented based on the original published text. Welcome to Rock Buzz. King Crimson's success really has been staggering. Too staggering for some, notably the groups who have been slogging around the circuit only to discover King Crimson racing past them to become the biggest potential success the underground has produced recently. So while the majority of critics, progressive rock connoisseurs, and musicians have been showering lavish praise in their direction, original, sensational, there has also existed a small but vociferous band of detractors. I think we have had and our success a little too fast for some of the people who've been trying to make it for ages. Says drummer Mike Giles. Fashions are pleasant but can be dangerously short-lived in roaring out from nowhere in a matter of half a dozen months to become the fashionable underground attraction of the day. King Crimson have a problem. It's, it's very worrying, but I cannot see what on earth we, we can do about it. How much are we, are we responsible for what has happened? We started off doing our thing, and after that, it was not up to us at all. People either go to see you or they don't. If they do, then word gets passed. People seem to like the group, and we can only hope that they genuinely like the, the music. But although the band could be called an overnight success, its members certainly couldn't. Giles, a 27-year-old who speaks with deliberation and much forethought, has been playing drums for 12 years, first in Bournemouth alongside people like Zoot Money, Peddler Roy Phillips, and Shadow John Rostill. Session work and various unsuccessful groups came before he formed Giles, Giles, and Fripp with Robert Fripp. Fripp himself, King Crimson's lead guitarist, has spent three somewhat soul-destroying years playing in a resident hotel band, backing cabaret artists before the forgettable group with Mike Giles, about which they don't like to talk. Ian McDonald, 23, and on alto sax, clarinet, flute, and mellotron for King Crimson, is a former army bandsman who has played in all kinds of outfits from classical orchestras to wind ensembles. Former draftsman and member of the gods where he switched from lead to bass guitar. Greg Lake is now the lead vocalist. While fifth member Pete Sinfield doesn't actually play in the group, but writes their lyrics and operates the famed King Crimson light show. The group came together in January of last year. First Robert and Mike, closely followed by Ian and then Greg. Pete, a one-time computer executive, drifted in later. I thought how bad the lights were in some clubs and I said I would build them some to give a color on stage. At the beginning I was just changing the lighting for each song. Mm. But eventually I started playing the lights with the music. Uh, so all five brought different influences. You have got jazz from me, classics from Bob, Beatles and and Dylan from Peter and Ian, and uh, heavy rock music from Greg. But uh, the divisions aren't really that satisfactory because we, we all like jazz, we all like Beatles and Dylan, etc. The group rehearsed for three months in a room beneath a cafe in London's Fulham Palace Road and made its first public appearance last April. There was a very hard core of people who gave us support early on. They spread the good word for us around the clubs and when we went out and uh, did our first gigs, we found a lot of people already knew about us. Their biggest stroke of luck was a booking on the Rolling Stones' Hyde Park extravaganza. It was no meager tribute hat, more than a quarter of a million Stones fans who sat for hours on the hard group, raised howls of delight and surprise for the aggressive music of King Crimson. Like many of their underground contemporaries, the group has a loathing of hype, although Pete and Mike say it has been somewhat exaggerated. It was because everybody had been messed around by managers and agents, particularly Bob, Mike and Greg, who have been through every bad scene in the pop machine. What does the word uh, pretentious mean to you? Pretending to be something you are not, I replied. Because uh, we've been called pretentious and I can't see it. I think most people are not quite sure what to make of us actually. Uh, audiences aren't quite sure what bits they should applaud. We may be a little bit ahead of our time. They can see there is something worthwhile, but they are not sure what. Else. What do we do? Stop pushing ahead, cash in on what is simple for people to understand or go by our own standards. And 
I hope this doesn't sound pretentious, but another group could come along and simplify what we play and they they would be away. Um, there are strong feelings in the band to get into more involved music. If we did this straight away, I don't think we would have an audience for it. Nevertheless, we enjoy what we do at the moment and believe in it and it earns us enough money to set up the machinery to get into the music we want to in time. The group made its debut album three times more through their own inability to be their own producers than for musical reasons. We were trying so hard and we were rushed at the end to get it finished. It could have been much better. It could have been 50% better. When we started, we were going to be a recording group more than a live group and it appears to have turned out the other way. There is a definite lack of feel on the album in some places and only about 30% of the sound everybody wanted. Um, what is missing is the presence, the harshness, uh, the attack. We ideally need a sixth member of the band in the shape of a producer. Nick Logan in London.